Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Golf Club Wasteland on the Nintendo Switch. A golfing adventure with a science fiction spin, it's more than a little unusual. But I'm going to say it now, do not let the golf in the name put you off, it's absolutely no simulation or true sports experience. So with that, hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we will do here, join our growing family and let's get started. Story then, and that's a big focus of the game, it's probably the main reason for the game honestly, with a golf pairing as a contrast to the dire state the earth finds itself in. The idea though, in this future the world has all but been abandoned following a climate disaster, and we get a few different viewpoints to detail the past, present and future. Think the golfer on his trip, you know, those that are higher up in society using Earth's disaster as a spin on a golf trip. A radio show that's designed for those that escaped Earth and basically broadcast to Mars's population, and then a secret spectator that you'll catch a glimpse of here every so often. These story moments though, they will have you questioning what is the truth, you know, the radio host may be saying one thing, but do the visuals, what we are seeing, does it back this up? There's just a lot to uncover and it even has a great little sense of humour to kind of reinforce the explanations, even if I will say in its delivery, at times it can be a little heavy handed. Expect themes of recognisable landmarks, historical events, the state of humanity, climate change and then of course Silicon Valley culture. On completion of the game then expect to unlock an art book that will dive in even further. I was impressed with its story though and it was not expected. So gameplay, and not a huge amount to it honestly, it's best described as a puzzle experience with golf fundamentals at its core, meaning you gotta get to the hole, but this can involve everything from think treacherous environments to abandoned buildings to the top of skyscrapers to almost even hopping between platforms. You'll line up your shot though, you'll use the environment even to maybe ricochet the ball, and yeah, that end goal is always that same thing, get to that hole. That's all you do though, character movement is then automatic. The controls as well, they couldn't be more simple either, no club selection or anything else, though I will say terrain can have an impact, think like water calls for a reshot or bunkers seriously impact your strength. The mechanics though control an arrow that's on screen with a left stick that determines direction and power simply by the length of the arrow. Alongside this then you can zoom the camera in and out. It's really about it though, I was surprised it didn't include think, touch controls though given its iPhone origins. From there then we do get free game modes, that's story which is unlimited shots, it's more designed to go at your own pace, just kind of uncover this world, challenge mode which actually adds a par score to beat, and then what's called iron mode, this unlocks after you beat challenge mode, and it would be considered you know, the ultimate experience with little room for error. Story though is where most will start, and you can still track your score in this mode on the main menu, it's just not going to penalise you, you know, for any massive failures. I'd say maybe a couple of hours of gameplay though to beat it dependent on your skill. It will though then give you reason to come back outside of modes thanks to what are diary entries that unlock adding more context to this world for completing challenges. Here's the problem though, the gameplay it feels like an afterthought to the unique story it's out to present. Initially the first few holes it's fine, but quickly with no club selection and really no way to determine how the ball will react, it's kind of a whole lot of trial and error that results in frustration. For me the game desperately needs some sort of visual of the ball's flight, even if this was just let's say an easy mode, something though for you to learn alongside. Without it it's difficult to just get comfortable and understand the power, especially evident in moments when you are putting as I would constantly like underpower or overpower the shot even though I actually felt like I had just moments ago done the exact same thing but I'm getting here a different result. In story the game's approach to overcoming this frustration, it allows you to skip holes once you hit a certain stroke count, but giving up and passing doesn't really lead to a good experience, it just leads to something that's not all that rewarding, especially when you'll most likely blame the game's lack of education. As a final note on this one then beat story mode and you will unlock the full game soundtrack, which is a great feature I'd love to see from games in the future. 
So graphically, I really liked it. Beautiful world design, referencing a ton of locations, which we will mostly be familiar with. And while it's a low detail style, it does a lot to deliver on its kind of end of the world theme. Seeing your ball is always simple though, always a good thing. And our golfer jetpacks all over the place with a ton of great animations. The simple color palette, then it goes a long way to ensure it always feels just a little bit different from hole to hole. Issues wise, the only one, the harder the hole gets, the more obstacles they do play a part. Often I couldn't tell what was in the foreground or background, meaning on more than a few occasions, I thought I would bounce off something, I didn't. Likewise, I didn't think I would bounce off something, and I did. A nice touch they could have added here, which would have really helped out the game. A quick option to retake your last shot, it would have gone a long way as well to correcting this issue. Audio finally, and that is the highlight of the game. The radio narration that tells much of the story is just an exceptional piece of work. From the dialogue of the host to the incredibly crafted music that's designed to remind those on Mars of Earth. It's all delivered pitch perfectly, allowing for something that feels realistic, but with a ton of humour that always landed. This carries the game, honestly, because for all the moments of the controls frustrating me, I always wanted to hear what would be said or played next. Next, adding some like minor sound effects then to kind of wrap up the audio package. So the final verdict, and this is a really curious little game. The good, the story, the visuals, the audio all combine to create a fantastic delivery. It hooks me, it'll hook you, and you'll want to know more. Sure, it can be a little heavy handed with its opinions, but that's a rare miss, honestly, with it landing, I'd say 90% of the time. The problem though, the gameplay, it's just lackluster and simply undercooked with little explanation of the mechanics or really any way to learn, so it devolves quickly into frustration and trial and error. A beginner mode showing the boar's full flight path, that would easily correct this and then you could turn it off at your own speed as you do get confidence. With that though, I think it's best described as half and half and with that in mind, an average five out of 10 from me today. But I will say, if you like the idea of the story, take a look here for sure, because it definitely doesn't disappoint in that arena. What do we all think though? Is this puzzle experience for you? Are you willing to put up with the frustrations in gameplay for the promise in its story? Let me know in the comments down below. A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.